Welcome back to another episode of the Let's Keep It a Buck podcast, the only podcast where we do things differently every single time. If you're a part of the community, you've seen it. If you've been on Twitter, you've seen it. If you've been on Instagram, you've seen it. If you've been in a lot of places, you've seen it. Listen, if you're new to this, you want to be true to this, make sure you hit that join button. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that uh, join button again to be a, a member of the Discord and things like that. Um, Listen, we've got a lot of stuff going on, a lot of exclusive things coming out. And the only way to be in the know is to know where N is. Hello? Mm. Mm. Um, last but certainly not least, if you're an audio listener, uh, uh, leave a five-star review. I feel like five-star reviews make my day go around. Uh, B. Soldier, you got a five-star review? Um, Let me see. We do have a five-star review. Five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Latest one is from June 4th. Oh, this is from B- Big Gucci Tony. This is the best pod to edge to. <coughs> keep it up, guys. That's the most wow. recent one. So you keep it up yourself, Tony. Um, and tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend. I'm starting to get recognized and pulled over more. And that's what's taking them so long. People want to debate me on my um basketball takes that I troll about so often. <sighs> anyway, with that being said, I got two of them. Let's get into the ball. We got a nice big three here for you today. Uh, first of all, we have the the game reactions, some Luka Doncic talk. Um, we have some Gilbert Arenas worst takes, and I'm talking about serious, serious worst takes. We're going to play a game. We're going to blindly rank Gilbert Arenas' worst takes. And then last but certainly not least, we're going to talk about the Lakers flopping, flopping back. And then flopping over again on this whole coaching situation. It's about to get really, really ugly. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, but before we get into any of that, you know what we got to do. Hot take or hot ass. <laughs> Where I tell you a take and you tell me if it's hot take or hot ass take. Predictions on two good hot takes. Let's get no, it. Fort noise and lame for that. Lame as hell. Like, come on, bro. Get off that man dick. Bro. It looked crazy, G. L stool president tell you, man, you usually a smooth dude. That's corny, dog. Like, get off that man top. Like, it's a girl to these dudes, man. Encourage them to leave that man alone. G. Like, <laughs> I mean, dead serious. It looked bad, bro. Like, you care that your man is obsessed with this man? Like, stop. And, and when we're even talking about, like, Kyrie, sure he made mistakes, bro, but his messages and where he's at and the position and what he's fighting for, for, like, his peace and everything, like, that's not turn this into a thing where we recognize, and not saying he's Ali, but recognize Ali too late. For certain points a few years ago, sure, but this dude has matured, evolved. No, Dave Portnoy. Now, <laughs> that was Evan Turner, or should I call Should I call him Yvonne? What should we call him? Yvonne? I think Evan's fine. I think Evan's I think, fine. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, that was Evan Turner in response to uh, Dave Portnoy talking about Kyrie. Let me uh, let me get the the, the exact uh, stuff that Dave Portnoy said about Kyrie. I don't think I have that. I thought it was just about the shirt, the shirt he wore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was about the shirt. I don't, I don't know if everybody saw the shirt. That's that's what it is. My bad. My bad. My bad. Um, so I'm gonna pull up the shirt. You know, you you know, they make a whole bunch of these little meme accounts that show these shirts and shit like that. This is so strange. All right, this is the shirt right here. Wearing it. This don't even look. This don't look like Kyrie. Uh, I see it. Like I, I can just see, see what it. they're going for. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but this looks like a homeless dude. How did they make Kyrie and Paul George? Like it looks like a couple of people. It's like a multiple faces. Now, do we think what Evan Turner said specifically is a high take? Do we have a problem with Dave Portnoy even wearing that shirt uh, if he is a, 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 a Boston Celtics fan? Um, I mean, I think the Kyrie hate has been corny for a minute now. It's been five fucking years, dog. And especially with how Kyrie's been talking about even Celtics fans like, He's been pretty nice to us this season. You know what I'm saying? He's he's been keeping it all sports, all basketball. Um, can I say that Dave Portnoy is just keeping it all sports, all basketball as well with that shirt? Maybe, but shit's been corny for a minute now. He won't let it go. Like I said, Kyrie is is uh up there with LeBron and the Yankees and 
some other teams in terms of rivalries now. It'll forever be smoke to these guys. It's fucking corny, but uh, he's really a hero in the in, in the town right now. So, who, uh, Dave or Kyrie? Kyrie, man, he's already Kyrie. Tachi. <sighs> oh, oh, brother. Oh, brother, brother, brother. I hate this dude. So He's already touching, man. He thought he was the villain. Does he, he have a really problem young. with Dave Fortner wearing the clown shirt courtside? I don't know who Dave is, so maybe Dave's toxic, you know, some other shit going on. But in general, do I think it's, like, crazy to put, like, a clown shirt on an opposition NBA player? No, not really. I don't. Maybe I'm too insensitive, but I don't see the issue with it. But... It may, if he's been on Kyrie's case the whole time, yeah, he's kind of dick sucking. Maybe go ahead, Damo. Before I, yeah, I would just say, um, in terms of Evan Turner's take, I think that's a hot take. I'm with him on that one. Uh, get off his dick, uh, type shit. I will say, in terms of does he have the right as a fan to do that? Yeah, if you're a Boston fan, you don't fuck with the opposing team, you have the right as a fan. To do some dick rod shit, but you have to admit that it's dick riding. I mean, I think we all can admit it's dick riding. If I'm a Laker fan and I'm at the game and they say it's a free throw, put your hands up and make a miss. You're dick riding. If you start waving your hand, ah, you're dick riding. But it's fine. You have the right to do that as a fan at the game. That's my take on it. Well, I don't want to be a dick rider. I think, I guess in a vacuum, it would be uh, not a bad thing. You know, anything to take a distraction, you know, as long as it's not, you know, racially insensitive or anything like that. He, he didn't say anything about Kyrie's culture or anything like that. What what I do think, though, is that, um, you know, with everything in totality, that's where it can be corny. But, you know, I might flip it back on Evan Turner. Stop. Stop dick riding the situation. We don't forgot about the situation. That's over. With. We, over we We done with that. They down 3-0. Uh, we done moved on to it. He's a clown for how he's playing in the series. Now, I don't necessarily think he's a clown per se. <laughs> so, like, yeah. yeah, get him. Get him, Omar. No, but like, I mean, <laughs> if, if that's how he feels, we, we passed all that other stuff. I don't even, is Dave Portnoy Jewish? I don't know. But we passed all that other stuff, bro. We just talking about how he's playing. He, play, he played like a clown for two games. He played bad. And now we're on to some other shit. Like, we passed that game. I don't know, man. It's too much politics in basketball right now. That may be yeah. a hot take. That, that's a hot take? I, that's a cold take. It definitely is. There's way too many politics mm. in basketball. I agree. Especially when you just say va- basketball versus <clears throat> NBA. Yeah. yeah. It's college and women's basketball and nothing I'm, but politics. That's a fact. All right, let's uh let's get into something else before we get <laughs> into <laughs> um we'll, we'll get right into the uh, the game one reactions. Uh my Nito stat of the day, uh sponsored by producer Cruz, is this one about Luka Doncic's drives. Uh not specifically his drives on offense, but getting driven on. They called him Pause. Route 66. No, they called him Route 66. Life is a highway with Luca. Let mm-hmm. niggas just blow by on him. Um, highest blow by percentage allowed on drives in a series, minimum 10 drives per game defended in the last 10 years. Uh, top three, all three this season Luka Doncic, Luka Doncic, Luka Doncic. Highest one being the Celtics. Next one is the Clippers. Last one is the Oklahoma City Thunder. Um, this is so this is the ranking that's the ranking for the last 10 years, and he has all top three. Yes, he has all top three. He has all top three. Just a just a quick one before we uh actually I, I'm gonna play the clip. Fuck it. I'll just play the clip. I was gonna ask the question, but I'm gonna play the clip and then we can get into the bull stuff about Luka Doncic and his defense. This is Luka Doncic on drives. Completely lost. Blow by. Another blow by. Who is he guarding here? Pointing to phantoms. Blow by. Blow by. Damn. Blow by. Gets lost. Kyrie has to push him. Blow by. Okay, that one. Kyrie big. lost too. So. <laughs> lost. Whoop. That's a closeout. Whoop. All right, some of these are getting Mick, but the but but 
I'll save my take for later. Whoop! What? They almost look like they're in his own. Blow by Omar, again. Omar. I'm about to say, I mean... What's he doing? Some of these, I give you. What's I can give you doing? some of these, but a lot of these are... Yeah. Oh, they're in his own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can give you some, but a lot of these is just Mm, he's mm, playing mm. a zone, and you play, you don't even play 2K, is what I'm getting from this dude. But I I just don't understand it. No, take it away because I want to know, especially based off of that. Um are we are we saying that he's the worst superstar defender in NBA history? Is is what they're saying? Oh god. That's what they're saying. I mean, in NBA history, it's crazy. You got to give me the candidates, but it would be in worse. terms of in NBA, I'm about to say in terms of the NBA. I mean, it's not the craziest thing in terms of his defense. I mean, nigga's not like that on defense. He gets effort. He can make some defensive plays. Cool. So can Tyrese Halliburton. Niggas still aren't looked at as defenders. So I'm not mad at the take. Again, to say NBA history, that's crazy, but it might be true. Definitely can say that about the NBA today. He's definitely one of the worst superstar defenders. Worst defenders are superstars. He's definitely one of those in today's game. All time, that might be true, but that sounds like a crazy thing to say. Yeah, all time, all time sounds like a stretch. I mean, we had these conversations about Steph Curry and James Harden uh, not that long ago. So Carmelo he Anthony, if he qualifies, and Steph in the space earlier today, Sage. Steph wasn't a bad defender. He wasn't bad. He was yeah, that's strong. what I'm saying. If it for me, I think one, I'll I'll answer the elephant in the room. Uh, do I think Lucas' defense has been bad as the glorious king guy? I mean, it, it, it could be better. I think Luca is definitely. Um, getting steals, and I don't equate that to good defense. Let me be very clear. But obviously, it's not the best defensive performance. However, I do think this, like this clip up the few, because the few one was funnier, but the blow by few shit, I think that's getting gassed a little bit. Um, and then I'm also just asking, what are we trying to say? Because we're highlighting this Luka defense shit. Are, are we blaming Luka for the series? Is this that what is that what's trying to get pushed here? Like, what are we? What are we trying to say? Are we are we just saying, yo, Luca can't play defense? Because at that point, I mean, half of y'all glorious kings can't play defense. But eh, I don't know. I mean, nothing new is really being said. Nothing really new is being said. Like, Luca was a poor defender going into the series. Uh, he's also banged up. Um, and this is another showcase of Luca being a poor defender. I think uh, this is another case of both things can be true. Luca is a poor defender. So I wouldn't expect him to be a clamp god. Um, there are factors as to why he's a poor defender, including injuries. But we can also simultaneously say that it's been a factor as to why they are losing. It is a factor. If you want to say it's not one of the main factors, then be my guess. But my counter to that would be, if you look at how the Celtics is attacking that defense, it is a lot of let's hunt for Luka, let's hunt for Kyrie, uh, let's get into our drive and kick game and um, force him to rotate. So I'm going to play, I'm going to pull this stat and then I just want to ask just as a totality about Luca's game three performance, Mavs defensive rating in the finals with Luca on the court is 107 points per 100 possessions with Luca off the court is 132 points per 100 possessions. Mavs are allowing 25.1 points more with Luca off the court. And people are trying to tell me Mavs lost because of Luca's defense idiocy Mm. um this is all coming off the heels of a game three loss mind you i think that it's important to point that out uh game three loss uh we sat here and we watched that game on playback um and especially second half i'm not mistaken although the box score is what i'm about to read it does not give the full story luka Doncic, 27 uh six assists six boards a steal uh, shot 14% from three, 41% from the field, 11 for 27. The thing that is is most notable is six personal fouls. And if I'm not mistaken, he had two personal fouls in the first half, right? Uh, no, actually one personal foul in the first half. And then in the second half, he got the other five. But but four of those came in the fourth quarter alone. Um, in which he fouled out two back-to-back plays that were very questionable. One on the, mm-hmm. the Jalen Brown post-up with the spin move 
and then on the other Jalen Brown drive with the um in the fast break. Yeah, they challenged the wrong one to me. Sorry. Yeah, they charge they challenged the charge. The charge it wasn't overturned, so he had to he was fouled out. I want to get y'all's opinions on the game three performance. Uh Luke in game three. Uh for me, obviously, this is the worst of the three. And obviously, this is when Kyrie showed up. So people are, you know, quick to jump the gun and say Luca for the entire series has been the reason, even though literally two is greater than one. Um, my glorious king could have played better. We've seen him play better back to back games. And defensively, obviously, that's being brought into um, worst all time talks, even though in the first two rounds, he was an underrated defender. But NBA fans are fickle. Nothing new there. So um, do I think Luca was bad? No. I think he definitely could have played better. I definitely think that he has no way of winning a game playing like the way he did. I don't care if this was right. I don't care if this was technically the closest game between the Mavs and Celtics. They not winning a game and Lucas doing those, in my personal opinion. So, um, yeah, I, I, I think he definitely could have played better. I don't give him an F. If I had to grade it, definitely C, maybe even C minus, because I hold Lucas to a higher standard. I hold him to GOAT standards for me personally. Don't make him go. Um, what was the question? My I was watching the game. <laughs> Lucas' performance. Like, Lucas' performance. How do you feel about Lucas? My fault. Yeah, 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 you're good. You're good. Yeah. My fault. Um, yeah, this is this thing is 2007. I asked this question uh, most of the times. I will simply say, this is this 2007. All right, he's he's definitely not been asked, but it's definitely been more to ask from him. He's definitely made a lot of bad decisions. Um, last game we fouled out. If you go back and look at a lot of those fouls, the dumbest fouls imaginable. Happened yeah. majority of the time early in the game. Frustration fouls. Yeah, frustration fouls. They're in. He's in his head. They're in his head. Somebody's in his head. Something's in his head. That's not just let's fuck these niggas up. He, he's mm -hmm. he's getting torched and it's defensively. They're they're bullying Luca out there. They're doubling them, tripling them, blitzing them. They push them on the ground. They holding them. They're doing a lot of things to get to him, and it's working. Thank God Kyrie had a great um game two, or this game wouldn't have been close at all. Um, in terms of this finals. I'm not going to say this is a legacy killer. That's overreactionary, but yeah, it I'm not it just looks like he's just not he's not who we thought he was. Oh my Simple god. That. He, he's not who we thought he was yet. And that's fine. Oh, he's oh, been great. God. He's still great. He's still top 5. He's just not he's not ready. Before oh. this finals, if you said the Mavericks were winning, you obviously had Luka going crazy and taking that next step to be the guy in the NBA. Essentially, that's what he would have had to have done. He would have had to show you he's the guy in the NBA in order to win. And he's not that right now. Because of injury, because of team performance, because of his own performance, all that. He's not there yet. And it's fine. It's his first finals. He he, he had basically two 30-point triple-doubles, gang. Okay, let, me, let me ask you, because we, we have watched a decent amount of Luka games. Do you consider what Luka's doing so far is Luca going crazy because I think he's been playing good, but it's just going crazy for you, which is I honestly this is what I think you expected, right? From Luca, I, th I think I think this is also the signi significantly his best competition yet, and I think the shots that he's getting and the coverages that are being thrown at him for him when I watch these games, yeah, he's going off. Now are these statistics? Um, oh yeah, Luca is going off. Stats go burr. No. Because we've seen Luca drop fifty, we've seen Luca drop sixty. Bar, that bar is so high now. That bar is so high. L the Luca going off, and I don't, I don't want, I don't want to cut you off from you what you're it. saying. The bar is so high for Luca going off. What does if somebody texted you right now and said Luca's going off? What would you mm -hmm. expect? Thirty-five. In like yeah, the forty or half, fifty right? in the first half or some shit like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Probably. To be honest with you. If if somebody said Luca's going off and it was fourth quarter and he had 27, would you I mean you would probably be asking, okay, did he score all these in the fourth or like I'm gonna what's, say it's 15 of this in the fourth quarter? Like what are we doing? Yeah. So it's the bar is just so high now, and it's honestly become unrealistic. To be quite well, I'm a, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this about Luca. Again, I I wanna preface this by saying Luca is playing good, and there are schematic things that are just stopping him. But from what I expect of Luca. There are a couple. There was game two where he had eight turnovers. Um, from what I expect of Luca, I do expect him to shoot better from three, and him shooting one of seven, or whatever it was, uh, from from the from three last game was not as good as I hope it would be. 
Luca in the first two games, I think for the series so far, shooting like 58% from the free throw line. In the first two games, he's shooting 46. He needs to be better at that. And I also think there's a lot more mismatches that Luca can take advantage of. And for some reason, well, not, injuries might be, play a factor, but I feel like when he has Al Horford on him, he can abuse that just a little bit more. When like I, I've seen Peyton Pritchard held, held his own a decent uh amount against Luca in some of these some of these possessions. Sam Hauser's even gotten a good possession off of Luca. Like I just think even from what I expect of Luca, it hasn't been perfect. It hasn't been perfect. It hasn't been great. I, I Luca's been playing good. I can't say he's playing great, bro. I, can't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what more somebody got to do. Cause I ain't gonna lie. In game one, a lot of people will go to oh he only had one assist. I challenge you to watch the game and ask how do you get an assist if people don't make the shot. There were there were there were passes that were just straight, bro. They're wide the fuck open, clank under the basket. They get fouled. That they was lit. There were literal what the fuck going on? Why can't nobody score the ball in game one? Two again, I I, I swear I'm just in an omniverse where NBA fans are just having eternal amnesia at the end of game one. Nobody had anything negative to say about Luka Doncic. At the end of game two, nobody had anything negative to say about Luka Doncic. It was strictly Kyrie was playing bad. Now game three comes along. All it takes is a couple of TikToks and a, oh, wow, Kyrie 35 go burr. And now Luka Doncic is the reason that the Dallas Mavericks aren't winning because he's not good enough. And then I also need to see because we're, we're acting like players like the level of LeBron even having gotten cooked in the for in the finals while playing amazing basketball. So I need to see these um these performances that are required for me to be like, OK, that that's the level that Luka needs to play and lose to where it's good enough where we're not going to blame Luka Doncic. Because I think it's a very daunting task when obvious players or, uh, top to bottom on the roster are underperforming. And we're going to then be like, oh, yeah. But the star player doesn't have 40 and 50. It's, it's also, I just want to add on fourth, fourth quarter scoring. Fourth quarter scoring. I think uh, I saw a stat like Lucas shooting 3 of 16 in the fourth. And like a lot of a lot of these games have been pretty close in the fourth. But That's just another thing. That's just another thing. And I, and I get what you're saying. Every time somebody criticizes free throw shooting, he has gotten better this season. Uh, yeah, free throws, I ain't got nothing. So I, I can't. I can't. He's fifty nine percent from the line this so far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said yeah. I ain't got nothing for free throws. I have, I have free nothing for free throws. throws. Everything else though, you said B souls, a high turnover game, uh, a game where he goes like one for seven, uh, fourth quarter scoring where he usually gets tired. It sounds like Luca, and I'm not. I'm not doing this to give t- too much like cape for Luka Doncic for real, for real, because they're losing. They are losing. I know this is a results driven business. It is what it is. But when I see stuff where people are talking about how he is as a player in this in this this manner, it pisses me off. And I and I want to point this to to Brian Windhorse right now. Luca fell onto the ground there in an unacceptable position to put himself in with four minutes left with five fouls, and then immediately looks at the bench and says, "You better bleeping challenge it," as if it's the bench's fault that he just made a terrible play. I'm standing here in the Mavericks tunnel. Over there is the Celtics tunnel. That's where the winners are. If Luca's ever going to be a winner coming out of this tunnel here, he is going to have to use this half what's happened in this finals as a learning experience. His defensive performance is unacceptable. He is a hole on the court. The Celtics are attacking him. They are ahead in this series because they have attacked him defensively. And you've got a situation here where Luca is complaining about the officiating. They have begged him. They have talked with him. They have pleaded with him. He is costing his team because of how he treats the officials. He's a brilliant player. He does so many things well. They are here because of how he did. His performance in this game is unacceptable and the reason why the Mavericks are not going to win. He's got to get over this. And the fact that he came out after the game and blamed the officials showed me he's nowhere close yet. So maybe over the summer, somebody will get to him because nobody with the Mavericks or anybody else in his life has. And that's where the Mavericks are at this point. They're never going to get to this tunnel with the trophy if he doesn't improve those aspects of his game. And and I know people are gonna say like, oh, factually, what he said is true. That's cool. My problem is two things. One, who are you to say he'll never be a winner? This is why he's a loser, et cetera, et cetera. When you can't get off of LeBron's coattails, like the reason why you're here is because of another grown man, right? You're a coattail rider. 
Brian on the horse. And then two, nothing he said is like some surprise to people that have been watching Luca. What has the knock been? What has the thing been? We just pulled it up. The drive percentage stats have been here for this entire playoffs. Yeah. It's always been about the defense, right? This this time it's what uh, three percentage points higher, or whatever the case may be. But he's been getting blown by all, all year. Okay, cool. He's been whining about calls all year. Okay, cool. You're only doing this now because it's a results based thing, I guess. But that's lame as fuck to me. If you've always felt that way, don't wait to be vindicated by the results. Say what you need to say when you should have been saying it. Hey, Luke is a chronic complainer and the, 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 the defense is bad or whatever the case may be. I say, I've been saying it all day. If the results were flipped, if the Celtics were down 3-0 and the Mavs were up 3-0, would Brian Windhorst be coming out saying this? Nope. No. He would shut the fuck up. Gawk off Tatum or something like that saying he's not performing. Text LeBron, I miss you, King. <laughs> and pick up more Dunkin' Donuts. Oh, man. Not again. Like, I, 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 I dead ass hate when people do that shit. If you feel that way, feel that way. You should have been feeling that way. And that all that does is spiral the either a he's never said that crowd or I never said that thing, which I said on 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 a recent Soul and Sage video. That's becoming like a top five pet peeve of mine. This this everything is so results oriented that when something finally happens, we either backpedal the fuck and act like there wasn't a narrative prior to that just got disproved, or we act like something that we just learned about is now something that everyone's been saying all along. And it, it's it's kind of corny to me. Um, I'm just casually, because I know I brought his name up when, I, when I'm talking about it, because I'm still on this point. And I just think it's not, 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 not bad, but definitely a dishonest and or lazy argument. So I just pulled up the three times in LeBron's career, 2018, 2015, and 2007, where people visually feel like, bro, there was nothing more that nigga could do while losing. In 2007, I think we all agree, if Luka didn't outplay 2007 LeBron in the finals to you, I don't know. 22 points, 7-7 seven and seven on 35-20-69 splits. I think it's fair to say that he was better than 2007 LeBron James. In 2015, again, nobody's discrediting LeBron when I'm doing this, by the way. LeBron James, 35 points, 8 assists, 13 rebounds on 39-31. Now, would you, myself, or anybody on this podcast sit here and be like, oh, yeah, LeBron was ass because he didn't even shoot 40% from the field? Hell no. Like, hell no. LeBron in 2015 was a fantastic fucking player. Um, LeBron in 2018. Now, this one is cause to pause, but let's add further context after I read the numbers. 34 points, 10, re 10 assists, eight and a half rebounds on 52-33. That sounds f***ing amazing. Fair enough. And maybe this math series needs to finish because LeBron in game one lit it up with 51 on, on amazing efficiency. If you, we don't have that for Lucas. So without Lucas, without that 51 bomb, and if he don't get it, then I guess 2018 LeBron clears. But at this moment in time, LeBron has 28, 10, and 9 on 49, 27 from three. Again, I don't think these are numbers that are dwarfing performances of what Luka's going on. So when I keep asking, what is this great play that Luka needs to do to where, okay, I don't, I'm not going to act obtuse anymore and act like Kyrie is underperforming, that PJ did, just randomly forgot how to A, get open in the corner, or B, knock down the shots when he finally gets him in the corner, let alone C, he's just not giving you anything above 20 points anymore. Uh, Derek Lively just randomly missed a dunk, couple of dunks that pissed me off. But for the most part, Derek Lively's been pretty cool. Daniel Gafford's been pretty meh. Um, Josh Green, Tim Hardaway, they're playing basketball. There's so many things that's like, are we are, are we dead ass right now? We we talking about Luka Doncic, the guy that was he got us to the finals and now was ooh woo woo. Look at Luka, it's finally his world, and now he's the bane of the Mavericks. It's just so weird to me, bro. It's just do, do, so do you feel like the discourse has gotten to a point where it's just all blaming Luka? I think I think so. That's what's headlining I'm right watching, now. I'm, yeah, I'm watching the morning shows, B souls. That's what's headlining. Yes. yes, to be on to be honest with you, yes. I guess. People, people have not mentioned Kyrie ever since he dropped 35. I have not heard one person say, let's not forget Kyrie has dropped uh, Kyrie's bad in game one and two outside of myself. And maybe and even, I just I mean, need to watch more shows, but I ain't heard it. 
not even that. I mean, it's just recency bias. We're talking about a series. Everybody's going to talk about the, the latest game at the time. And in this series, again, I would be so. Lucas played good, especially the Lucas standards. I don't know anyone that thought if the Mavericks were going to win a champion. Granted, everyone knows the context of no one else is showing up. But if you had Luka winning the finals, giving you a, a typical Luka night, just playing like normal Luka, okay, we were on the same page. I thought in order for them to win, Luka would have had to have been more than Luka. That was my turn. That was my train of thought. But I said the same thing for the Celtics outside of if defensively they just fucking shit up. And there was a third option. Everyone just hits threes because the Mavericks defense as a whole is awful. It's not just Luka. I will, I will, I will give it to people. It's not just Luka's defense. The entire Mavericks defense is horrible. That zone they're running, which we're using to goose up these drive by numbers. I don't know if y'all know how to run a zone, but if a nigga, you, if you're playing on top of a zone, the purpose is to drive the man to your teammate behind you, to the help, to the protection. You drive him there, you come back up and cover your zone. The Mavericks are clearly running a zone. Now, yes, there have been um, sequences, there have been moments where Luka has just been awful on defense in a man-to-man -man situation, in a transitional situation, playing his own. Everyone knows that. But to make it seem like, oh, my God, Luka's defense in general is just awful, and we're not going to talk about Daniel Gaffer's defense looking awful, Derek Lively's defense looking awful. Derek Lively looks awful as a player right now. He does yeah, not look like the there. Derek Lively anyone anyone thought he was going to be. Why? Because he's a rookie. And hey, so as I said it before, I say it again. Goddamn, age might matter. Like I maybe I was wrong. <laughs> age might matter. Like experience. Yeah. Hey, it's experience might matter. Forty year old Al Horford is getting the job done. Experience mm -hmm. fucking matters. I was wrong, but I'm not going to sit here and act like I'm. I'm not going to act like I'm watching 2018 LeBron. I'm not going to act like I'm watching 2015 LeBron. I'm not going to act like I'm watching any version of LeBron because this is not that because LeBron gave you defense, and that is the biggest difference between these performances and losing efforts. That's a, that's a fair argument LeBron. for defense. It's the defensive matchup between the two. So I won't look at it like, as that, but I will look at Luka's performance losing in the finals. How do I look at any other player who's lost in the finals? Jim, any number one who's lost in the finals? That goes for Jimmy Butler. That goes for... Um, fucking Jason Tatum. That goes for Jimmy Butler. That goes for um Devin Booker. No, Devin Booker. Then Jimmy Butler. I'm sorry. That goes for all those niggas. Bad Everyone question. has things. It, it's been questions about all those guys and those conversations are fair. If you're losing, you're not doing more than you average than you normally do. We're gonna have that conversation. Real quick, real quick before you go, Sage. I do want to give Charles Barkley credit. Um, he has listed the others as reasons as to why. Um, oh, you know, they're losing or whatever the case may be. But every, every Stephen A, he wet the bed. Uh, Brian Windhorst, that weak ass monologue. Just every everybody else has been for the most part saying that it's it's a flip. It's it's been Luca. I I get where y'all are coming from, but I also don't like this counter counter push, I guess, of just because he doesn't have help and his help isn't showing up, that now we can't just point out the criticisms in, in, in Luca's game. Like, oh my god, he just Bro, I mean, he has to drop 50 every night. Like, we just, oh, uh, this is just a situation. Like, no, in this situation, I can still call him out for his free throws. Uh, I am expecting more than 32% from three from Luka. Um, I, I'm expecting him, once again, to abuse these mismatches more. Um, and I'm expecting him to be better in the clutch for what I think Luka is. And I, I think that's not even on some, oh, uh, he got to go crazy shit. Just a regular Luka game. This guy that's arguably uh the best in the world, top three, whatever. Yeah, no, I'm I'm expecting that from Luke. I'm I'm sorry if, if, if that's too high of a standard now. I, I think what's what's again uh, what's un what's oh my god, not unironic. What's ironic of this conversation is we've only scaled this standard of like W loser to like three of the strongest LeBron seasons of being a W loser of all time. And maybe me and Dama would just have a separate debate about this. And two of them are just objectively, he's right there. One of them, he's just beyond better. I don't think, yes, in 2015, he was a better defender for sure. But I also think in 2015 that the Cleveland Cavaliers at least had like, you know, better schematics and definitely better defense than this Dallas Mavericks team. This Dallas Mavericks team is just... I, I don't want to say bad coaching because that's OD. They made it there for a reason. Jason Kidd wasn't awful this entire postseason. But Jason Kidd is getting fucked by Joe Mazzula. I think, I think we all agree on that. Um, I also think that in 2018, 
LeBron's defense wasn't necessarily bad either. It's still significantly better than Luka Doncic's, but it wasn't exactly the cream de la crop, whatever the term is. And also, yet again, series ain't over. If Luka does have that 50 bomb, quite literally, it's a one-to-one to what LeBron did in 2015. Like, damn near down the line outside of, I think, APG, and if we're talking about APG, th- that's strictly because we we're seeing how in game one niggas are missing shots. We're 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 deliberately seeing these things. So I'm not saying Luca is. I'm not trying to be a somewhat hypocrite and saying Luca's absolved of game three. He's not absolved of defense. He's not absolved of shooting bad from the free throw line. Which that I'm being dead ass. I'll dumb it down again. I have nothing for this nigga just missing free throws. But. At the end of the day, I think it's very weird that the trend, headline, thumbnail, and all the attention about why the Dallas Mavericks are losing this series is going directly to Luka and not anybody else, really. I think that's weird, and I will die about that. The, the, the only thing I'll say to wrap up this is, and that, that's why I, I, I said what I said about Brian Windhorst last night in a tweet, and the night before, you'll see this two nights, the night of the game in a tweet. And then I followed it up this morning. I just, I truly just think it's weird the way we flip on players because we do it quite often. If Luca was doing this and they're running off all these wins, et cetera, et cetera, let's say they ended up being a 61 team in the regular season, but he's still complaining and it's still defense. They would make the argument. They like the media would make the argument for us about conserving energy for, for offense. And they would make the argument about how passionate he is and how the, the officials aren't officiating correctly, kind of like Shaq or LeBron or something like that. When going through the finals or whatever the case may be, he's still winning. He wins the whole finals. He would be a passionate player. He would be conserving himself because of how great of an offensive player he is, et cetera, et cetera. If you flip that with a loss in the finals, all of a sudden it goes from passionate player, you know, he cares about winning, he's getting officiated differently, blah, 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 blah to... This is what cost him the game. How the fuck did we get here? Literally, how do we get to the finals is what I'm saying. That's Because fair. of that same shit. That's what I think is really weird. That's all I'm saying. That's literally all I'm saying. But we're doing this for no reason. Mavs in seven. Nah, um, <laughs> with that being said, because we got onto the reporters, I don't care about this Joe Mazzullo thing, Cruz, so it doesn't matter. Oh, wow. Yeah, after us. Yeah. Because we're talking about reporters in the grand scheme of this conversation, I do want to hop into uh, Dan Hurley, Wojnarowski, Sham Shmarmia, and the great coaching uh, uh, debacle. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let me, let, me pl- let me play this first. Let me play this first because this is, this is a friend of the show, Nick Wright. Uh, this is to conclude that Lucas segment for Ofro. Um, Nick Wright said he talks to Brian Woodworth. He texted him. And I reached out to Wendy this morning because I adore him, and I think he might be, he's certainly on the current Mount Rushmore of respected basketball voices. Sure. I thought the table was set for Feast on Luka Day today in a way that was not fair to his performance or him fouling out. Because at the reason I brought up Steph was we have seen something incredibly similar. Now, Steph had already won a championship, which obviously buys you a lot. I understand that. And that was Steph's game was to win a championship. This was kind of to avoid losing a championship. It's not one-to-one, but it is not unprecedented what we saw. And I listen, he needs to get back on defense. That I had a bigger, like the, yeah, well, refs and then letting five on fours happen can't happen in the NBA Finals. Yeah, I also think he gets a bad whistle, but I think some of that is his own doing because refs are human, and he is always going after him. Oh, but, yep. but, but I don't think he gets a good whistle befitting his status in the league, and I don't think we typically see a superstar get four fourth-quarter fouls, at least three of which were coin flip calls. So I understand some of the frustration. But yes, he needs to be better. Is he the reason they lost? No. He's the reason they're there. And he was the second best Mav yesterday. He needs to be better. But this whole, let's reevaluate Luka Doncic today, I think is too much. I think it's too much. What the fuck? I just agree with Nick Wright. He can be both. What the fuck? I don't think it's a... I don't... But I'm I'm not going to lie. I don't think this is a reevaluate Luka. Like I said... 
You said he's just, you said. No, no, no. I said he's just not there yet. He might not be that level of player just yet. It might take another year or two. Just like Tatum was not there. I still don't think he's there. Just like Jalen Brown wasn't <laughs> there yet in 2022. He wasn't there yet. Now he's there. Their wife's there. These niggas is there. They're there now. But Luca's just not there yet, which is fair to say because we can all agree there are moments where he could be better. That's, That's very fair to say. What, what, uh, would, what would y'all say would be the, the biggest reason as to why they lost yesterday? The rest of the team, the role players, the others, the niggas are sucking. And their defense, their team defense, and other guys not being able to consistently score if Luka's not there or if Kyrie's not going. That's yeah, I'm not going to lie. And if if y'all are thinking this is on my glorious king timing, I don't know what to tell you. When Luka Doncic sits down in any game this series, I get depressed. I'm being, I'm being so serious. I think if there is a Boston fan alive or a chat nigga alive, a TSO hater even alive, that is going to sit here and tell me that when the Dallas Mavericks are benching Luka Doncic, that Boston don't damn near immediately turn up? I gang, I, I guess if that's what you think, but me personally, this nigga, like, Luke, like, we're talking about game three being so ass. You understand that these niggas was on like a 22 to 2 run, then Luca fouls out, and I was like, holy shit, who can score? Did we forget about that? Because he lost. Exactly. Like, man, never let's mind, keep, bro. Let's keep, let's keep going. And no one is disagreeing. Okay. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Man. Um, so, like I said, we're going to talk about Bobby Hurley and this whole Lakers fiasco uh, with them dropping the ball here. So, I think the, for the most part, people were. Um, you know, keeping up with this situation. I said Bobby Hurley, Dan Hurley. Most people were keeping up with this situation uh, very closely, especially those that are in the Lakers fandom, franchise, and organization. Uh, but the undertones of it was a battle between Shams and Woj, which we'll get to in a second. Uh, but apparently the talks fell apart. Lakers offered him 11.6, which is uh, 0.6 higher than UConn did. And this is what Shams had to say about this stuff after he turned down the job. My sources have said that J.J. Redick has been the front runner for this job. James Rago has also, you know, been among the leaders for this job as well with J.J. Redick. But when you think about the process so far, right, Rob Polinka has met, before this Dan Hurley situation, he had met twice uh, with two candidates. He, he met with J.J. Redick once. He met with James Borrego a uh -huh. separate time solo. And then James Borrego came into the facility, met with everyone, met with ownership, and and then they last week on Wednesday turned their attention, I'm told, to Dan Hurley. And he was not the number one candidate, the number one guy to go pursue from the start, from the beginning. Uh, but they felt like there was an opening there for him. He was in contract negotiations with UConn. He was discussing a deal to go back. And they felt like there was an opening. And they threw what really people around the league believe was a Hail Mary offer at him. Six years, $70 million. And at the end of the day, Dan Hurley chose not to leave. He chose to stay for $20 million less at UConn. They did go. Now, that's interesting, right? You know, we, we, good coach, two-time winning coach, or whatever the case may be. Woj and Shams were going back and forth about the validity of those, you know, accounts. Uh, what was real, what wasn't real, or whatever the case may be. Was it a real negotiation? Da -da 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 -da. But later on that week, Dan Hurley... He's, he, this week, Dan Hurley's taken to the media, and he is dispelling a lot of the rumors about the situation. Oh, Dan spoke. Is there an amount of money, Dan? Is there an amount of money that they could have offered that would have changed the decision? Yeah, I think there. I mean, to leave, there probably is. Um, you know, to leave a place at any moment in your life, I think that, like, to say that that it's not a motivating factor, the finances to leave a place is definitely a thing. To stay at a place, I don't think it's ever going to be a thing. Um, like to to stay somewhere like UConn, if there wasn't, it would never have been. Um, I, I think a financial thing. Uh, like again, this wasn't like some like pressure tactic uh, to make me the highest paid college coach. Like that that was already done. Um, but to leave a <laughs> leave a place that you you feel the way we do and the family connection um with, with my wife my sons my mother-in-law my my brother my father you know who like i know 
how much it means to my dad to go to the Big East tournament and to come to, you know, 10 UConn oh, games a, message. Uh, a year uh, at home and, and, you know, sitting courtside when I'm coaching against Rick Pitino, <laughs> you know, like, I mean, yeah, you know, to, to leave all that behind, there, there probably is a number. Uh, <laughs> Do you see how he just glazed up? You yeah, kind of like me for real. Said, <laughs> I mean, there is a number though, <laughs> just to be quite frank. Um, so that was one thing that was interesting. He kind of gave it a little tidbit that I want to harp on next. Um, but essentially the Lakers had him, they just lowballed him, right? <laughs> Lakers didn't give him what he needed. Uh, and then another interesting tidbit that came out from him having these conversations is that apparently he was in contact with LeBron James. Did you talk or text or anything? We, we, we had some text messages and, um, you know, he, uh, you know, it, it, incredible, uh, you know, message from him uh, over the course of the weekend, just, just, uh, you know, talking about, you know, talking about basketball and, and, and some different things and, and, and letting me know, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, that, that if he was there in LA, that I'd have his support. And uh, just like, think about that, like that, that blew my mind. And, um, and then we, we, we got into a, a text exchange and then the, the exchange even, even went through. Uh, to All right, bro, you're going to glaze it up again. So two, two things that should probably have Lakers fans uh, a bit concerned, a uh, huge concerned is the fact that apparently LeBron James wasn't going to be there. And the fact that the Lakers are low-balling offers and giving shitty deals for coaches. Now, I'll say personally, if he couldn't get a deal there that was good enough, if I was him, I would have taken it to prize picks. No cap. Mmm, shout out to Prize Picks, the sponsor of today's podcast. Here we go. Prize Picks is our favorite way to play daily fantasy sports, and we will show you guys how to make a lineup on Prize Picks right now. Sitting here, um, we only got potentially one more game in front of us. You know what's you know what's you know it's nuts? <laughs> I think Jay Sean is gonna, Huh? Nothing. I think I think Jay Sean is gonna have a master class. I think Jason. That last game too, man. I, yeah, I just I feel it. I never make any lineups with Jason Tatum anymore, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Nah, I gotta go for it. And another one that I'm excited for. The Give great Al Horford. Come on, <laughs> Atlanta's nah. own big Al. Jalen Brown, Atlanta's own. I gotta go with Kyrie two and a half. They're gonna go out swinging. You see me swinging. I put 15 in and I hit submit. Boom. All right, and that is how you make an entry on Prize Picks. The process is fairly simple, as you guys saw. They have an app that you can download. They have obviously the website that we were just on. And thanks to our friends over at Prize Picks, if you guys want to use code LKIB, you guys can get a hundred percent deposit match of up to one hundred dollars. Once again, that is code LKIB, hundred percent deposit match up to one hundred dollars on your first deposit. And shout out to Prize Picks for sponsoring this podcast. Thank you, Prize Picks. Um, so Price Picks gave us a good deal. Not gonna lie, Sage Damo, your franchise seems like they can't give not only the coaches a good deal, but the players now. Hey, Damo. <sighs> All I heard for real is that LeBron is out here sabotaging the Lakers moves. Because <laughs> <laughs> why, why in the world do you need to tell Dan Hurley in the process of negotiations? Hey, man, if I'm there, hey, gang, if I'm there. Hey, you got my support if I'm there. I don't even know if I'm going to be there if you're there, gang. I ain't going to lie. That's crazy. Who, he tell, he, who he said something like that? followed it up with, well, are you going to be there, LeBron? Maybe. Uh, we'll see. Maybe. Hey, man, the draft are you going to be yet. there? No, you said it. Are you? Sign, yeah, sign first. <laughs> sign first. I, you sign first. I dare you. A triple dog day. Yeah. No, you so, hang up. Oh, so, yeah. That's the first thing I got from you. Yeah, no, that was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first thing I got from it was LeBron's out here sabotaging the Lakers moves. Secondly, glad to hear that LeBron is definitely optimistic about his future. That's one step closer to him getting his black ass out of here. Great. Um, thank you for your service. I've been adamant on my stance. 
I am done with the LeBron era. I am ready to move on. So if you are, if you got one foot out the door, I'll grab the other one for you. <laughs> Trust me. I, I think it's a great decision. Lean into it, please. Uh, thirdly, yeah, it sounds like the Lakers fucking up. I, I knew our front office was a problem. I said our front office was a problem since we didn't bring back a lot of the guys that won us a championship in 2020. Just saying. I've been adamant on Rob Pelican is a clown. Um, Jeannie Buss sucks. She needs to sell the team. They were right when in time. Uh, I, I, her dad was right. This isn't a woman's job. This is crazy. She was never ready. No, never. She was never ready. Her dad was correct. She just wasn't ready for this life. She should have listened back then. Um, because gave it not Harold Bus. Some fast. Craig Bus. Somebody. Anybody else that was there? Well, he got an illegitimate black son. Give him a shot. <laughs> Dwayne Bus. Dwayne Wade Bus. Jeremy. Jeremy. Face Jeremy face cam, Sage. You're cook. It's cool, man. <laughs> hey, nah, fool. Yeah. I'm just in there like, damn, man. Jeremiah Bus? <laughs> Jeremiah Bus? It's okay, man. I, I got I got to earn brownie points. I will not partake in this. Um, for me, Tyrone Bus? No. <laughs> And he's black. All right. Um, for so me, is bus. <laughs> what is wrong with you? <laughs> for me, man. I mean, I don't know five things about Dan Hurley outside of back-to-back -back natties and this whole Lakers fiasco. Boom. And this is horrible for the goddamn Lakers, man. This is this is bad. Uh, Domo may be dragging it with the LeBron agenda. But I'll say this, man. LeBron said he was out the process. Obviously, the coach might hit him up, woo -woo, but that was horrible. <laughs> if what was said was true, that is a horrible conversation and thing to say. And then, obviously, the negotiating skills of the Los Angeles Lakers are clearly still flawed, which we all knew because they still go around puffing their chest out talking about, we're the Lakers, in, like, every topic about the Lakers. So we knew this. It's unfortunate. I'm not going to spoil what my hot take is, but – it's not just a biased thing. I'm not going to act like the Lakers are this glorious king like how um, I do with my my glorious king, Luka Doncic. At the end of the day, I, I'm just having an awful NBA season, and um, the Lakers are not helping at all. <laughs> at, at all. I, I, I don't even have words. I'm just stop talking. I hate him. I hate this team. I want to play this uh, final portion of it because it, it dispelled, you know, something that we showed last time on this platform was that this was supposedly a leverage play for Dan Hurley. Uh, and that's from friends of the show, family of the show. Some would say for some people, it's family of the show. I'm not going to claim him. Oh, no. um, legend of winning and misses of winning. Oh. Uh, when they said that this was a leverage play, Dan Hurley apparently seen that. I promise you he's seen it because he's using it verbatim. <laughs> Stop. What a great recruiting pitch for you, though. You turn down Kentucky, you turn down LeBron, you turn down the Lakers. You tell the kids, I did it for you. Well, that, that to me is one of the dumbest uh, takes I, I've heard. <laughs> well, thank you, Dan. No, not you. Right, I mean, right, Stu right. Gotts, I got a Stu. I got a Stu Gotts on my team too. Here, I got the uh, Jalen Stewart, and uh, oh, man. I called them. I called them. Uh, you know, Stu, and uh, I got in trouble uh, for. Brianna Stewart. So now I call him Stu Gotts sometimes when he does. <laughs> no, you don't. Okay. Tell the story. Focus. <laughs> he, has nah, he just like me for real. Japanese Hall of Fame. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, you know, like one of the worst takes. Those coaching I've movies must be long as hell. Leverage play by me um, to improve my situation at UConn. But I don't need leverage here. <laughs> We've won back-to-back -back national championships, um, you know, at, at this place. And, um, like, I've, I'm not – this was never a leverage situation for me. I've had a contract um, in place here, you know, for, for a couple of weeks. And the financial part in terms of salary has been done for a while. There's some other parts like NIL uh, and staff salaries and some different things that – that I needed, uh, that I want adjusted, that I'm not comfortable with. Um, but the sense or the idea that this was some conspiracy to get me a sweeter deal at UConn um, is just, it's lazy and, um, and, and not, it was truly like a, a gut wrenching decision for me because I. All right. All right. He's, he's glazing it up again. Um, 
yeah, I want y'all to know I've stopped working at Legend of Winning Enterprises. I don't make his takes anymore. So when he made that, yeah, when he made that dumbass take, him and Raquel, um, that's all, that's his own knowledge. It was never a leverage play. Let me ask. Let, let me ask specifically to Damo and, and B Souls. I mean Damo and Sage because they are they are Lakers guys. The problem that a lot of Lakers Nation had with this is that they were going to be paying a college coach more money than like an Eric Spolstra. Mm. Do you guys feel like you have to overpay because of who you are and where you are now? And I just mean it for players in trades and oh, absolutely, and absolutely. Shit. Thank you, Dom. Absolutely. You. I don't know. I don't know if Low and Mo uh, put that out there on the timeline, but. Uh, <laughs> I I I'm I'm not agreeing or disagreeing with them. I don't know what Lo and Mo had going on. Uh, I, I did see the this is a boring finals take. Oh, I've been said it. Yeah, shut up. Because when it came down to the clutch, y'all both were on the edge of your seats. Crazy. But outside of that, yes, we definitely overpay for players. A hundred percent. I've heard the Laker tax. We overpay for everything. I've watched years and years and years of potential trade assets or tr- potential trade pieces that I'm like, hey, we dangle THT. Kuzma and a pick, I think that'd be good. Hell no, nah. who want that? Hell no, nah. who, who, who want that? And the same player gets traded for two second rounds in Bones Highland. I'm like, what the fuck? That's better. That's a better pack. Hey man, that's a good value. I like Bones. Bones is cool. Really? Yeah, niggas don't like Kuzma THD that much. <laughs> Crazy. I'm over there. Hey man, I dead ass think you know a guy like Buddy Hield. Them, them Buddy Hield t- conversations and talks. All the right, potential things, that bad. Yeah. all the potential things we could have got for Buddy Hill just for him to get traded to the Sixers. For who? Who did they trade him for? Do y'all remember? Because I don't. Ray, Ray, Tings, and uh, Red. I actually forgot. You got me. I was actually it, forgot. Was it Rashawn Holmes? I'm Is that who I traded? Tell it was me. Red. It was red. Red. What pick? Come on, man. Like, that's what gets traded. But we over here, hey, man, I ain't gonna lie. Young assets picks. Man, who the hell would want that? They trade these niggas for two fucking second rounds and a fax machine. Like they're Kyle Corner. Birkin, Corkmaz, and Doug McDermott. A 2029 second and a 2024. That's better. (laughs) No, uh, he froze. uh, Unless he froze. W (laughs) emo, by the way. W thumbnail, actually. But um, now you froze, but I'll just tag in right here. Pause if needed. Um, yeah, yeah, I I think a hey, there's two sides to every uh coin. Ah, that's a horrible analogy. But yes, the Lakers, while simultaneously while also being stupid, English is hard. I think the Lakers are really dumb, but damn it, we get hold too because we are the Lakers. I think that is also a truth. There is a lot of people that are trying to do the we done with the 90s shit to LA and as a result, <laughs> trying to like humble the franchise. Well, and the way they go about humbling the franchise is kind of hoeing the franchise. We've heard many stories about how certain GMs, coaches will just not do business with us just because we are like we're the LA Lakers. So there, there's two sides to every story. I think it is ev- there. I think there's clear evidence in a lot of trade scenarios as Domo was going to. That yes, the Lakers get that weird ass Laker tax going on. But then again, being a Laker is a hard thing to do. So. Bezos, if you were if you were um, a head coach, you know, a coach somewhere out there, and the Lakers called you up and said, "Hey, we, we're we're really seriously considering you," you would you put that Lakers tax on them? And uh, like, ask for more? Yeah, yeah, guarantee uh, whatever you want to ask for. But would you would you tax them? Uh, yeah. <laughs> what? Oh man, now, you're supposed to be the solution. Now, now, would you would you do that? I am. Would your, would your would your package pause look different for the Lakers that you were asking for versus like I don't know Charlotte or some shit like that? Um, that's the real question. Nah, nah. If my price ten mil. My price ten mil. Oh, I ain't gonna lie. You wouldn't you wouldn't charge the Lakers more than you would charge the Wizards or the Hornets? If I really got leverage, I would rather it. It's like it. Let's say I'm JJ, right? I don't have coaching experience. It's down the third. I would like to be in a situation where I don't have to coach LeBron and AD out the gate. Like, you know, let me let, let me get some PT as a coach. Um, so yeah, in that case, yeah, man. I'm gonna give me two mil more, man. Give me two mil more, man. Two a year. Please. A year. 
first of all, I I know I'm already gonna be on the hot seat as soon as I get the job. Okay. Yeah. That's the way that it works. So I need something to ease my stress. Bring me the white women and the coke. Y'all, Thanks. man, Thanks. let's let look, man. Why can't we just go about it the way that y'all want to go about it, bro? All hoops is good hoops. Um, all like like big market, small market, it doesn't matter anymore. Why does it matter with us, bro? It's bigger than black and white. I ain't gonna lie. This is getting racist. This is getting this is getting racist. I'm I'm pulling the card. It's get it's getting real racist. We got Kendrick Lamar sweeping Canada, but for some reason, niggas still hate the Lakers. Man, is Genie Bus the new Caitlin Clark? Um, now the other underlying thing that I said that we were gonna talk about from that situation though is the beef that Shams and uh uh, uh Woj had. Now, apparently it started off with how Woj was reporting the Dan Hurley situation, a uh, serious contender, blah, 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 blah. Uh, you know, it's it, it, they, they've been looking at Dan Hurley for a long time. And then Shams inserted himself um, into the beef, into the mix by saying that this was never serious. It was a leverage play, blah, 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 blah. And it got me thinking about my hot take of the week. It got me thinking about my hot take of the week. We should have never given the power for everybody to become a personality or a face or an entertainer. Um, Because when I look at Shams and Woj and Brian Windhorse, they're they're all from the same cloth. One is just more handsome. One is just more fat. And one is just older. I (laughs) I saw this tweet today because, you know, rest in peace to Jerry Wright. Jerry, uh, Jerry West, I'm sorry. Rest in peace to Jerry West. It it says, I really hate Shams. I think people would say, on a short list, Jerry West is probably one of the top 10 most important people to basketball. Full stop. Yeah. There's an argument. They're, they're actually an argument. One this, of, is, the very least. this is how Woj wrote out the initial post about Jerry West. Jerry West lived a profound basketball and American life. Iconic as a player, executive, and looming figure in the history of the game. He was an MVP, a champion, a gold medalist, a dynasty builder, and literally the league's logo. His loss leaves a massive void. I think that that's yeah, professional, fantastic, all that. Yeah. This is how Shams did it. Jerry West has passed away at 86 years old. I see. I see. Over I, I see. I see. Yeah. This is like a no to gang type shit. It's this is like, very flight, Mike. Yeah. I see. I see. I see what we're getting at. That is very um, Mike for Mister Handsome. I mean, I'm not offended, but I see what you did. I see what you. I, you got a point. I, I'm literally not going to sit there and argue with you. You got a point. I'm just not offended, but I do. See how, yeah, he, he's very much just trying to get the news out ASAP. Type even when shit. they do the, I feel like even when they do the draft shits, it's like that too. The draft? Yeah, even when they're covering the draft, it's I want to beat people to the point or whatever the case may be. Like, mm. what, what are we, what are we doing as far as real journalism goes? But because they're personalities and because they'll be featured on these shows and because he's the Rizzler or whatever the case may be, blah, 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 blah. It's okay. All that's okay. Well, let me ask you this: Do, do you hold tweets to the same journalism standard as like an article on the Athletic or whatever? Because I feel uh, like I, I personally don't, because it's fucking Twitter. So, I think I think I do. Um, especially in a situation like that, again, it's it's giving off it's giving off flight, Mike. It's just giving off. I want to be the first one to get this off. Just so I could say I'm the first one to get this off. And it's not necessarily just him. I, I'm looking at, and I know people are going to say this is a loose correlation, but I'm looking at the way that people cover Caitlin Clark. And that was one of the most disappointing things about this. Not that I didn't think that the um, conversation was going to be nasty like this. It's the fact that I'm seeing people who are so-called professionals participate in this nastiness without doing it justice by having well-thought-out words, you know, well-put-together arguments. I'm seeing them participate in the Twitter shenanigans. Let me be first. Type shit. I see where you're coming from. I'm not, I'm not going to act dense. 
uh, compared to the uh, there, there is a difference between the two tweets, but I'm just saying if you're comparing it to what Flight Mike did back in the day, yeah. I still think that like yeah. he, it, it, he was he was like factually incorrect about a couple uh, in, incorrect about a couple things. I mean, at the end of the day, he still said a fact. Like he didn't make no take, no nothing. Flight, it was just, Mike, flight was Mike just with. meaning I want to be first. Like I'm doing this in order to be first. Yeah, because obviously Shams ain't monetizing this shit, or I don't know if that benefits him long. It, indi- yeah, it indirectly, he's indirectly monetizing. Yeah, it, but. And and, and you're right. I'll, I'll, I'm not gonna take it back fully, but I understand the differences between flight mic and the mm-hmm. incorrectness factually, uh, and what we're, what I'm talking about here today. But the concept of just I want to I'm a journalist. Let me be first without doing it justice. Takes away from, you know, you as your credibility of a journalist. I, I don't I don't care when Bomani Jones writes or puts out his monologue or his deep dive about something. Because I know it's going to be prepared with thought. I don't care about when Larry Wilmore does the same thing because I know it's going to be prepared with thought. Um, I don't expect much from like a Shams or, you know, a Woj or whatever the case may be. Damn. Damn. Uh, Mine's is something calm, something cool, nothing crazy, man. Nothing crazy. I just, you know. Scroll on a timeline. You know, we've had conversations and I just happened to see that someone kindly called. Hey, man, someone just happened to notice a coinky dink when it comes to Shannon Sharp and really mainstream media you can talk about for this. Uh, people brought up the cu- quote Shannon Sharp had on Shikari when she didn't make uh, the Olympic team a couple years ago, whenever it was. You know, comment. She could she could have competed. She didn't qualify to compete. Stop bull jobbing. Stop the bull job antics. Train hard. Sports aren't sympathetic. You do or you don't. But when asked about Caitlin Clark, you know our guy, Mr. Bojangles himself. Name a more popular woman basketball player right now than Caitlin Clark. Nothing to do about her competing. Nothing to do about her performance. Nothing at all. Strictly a bunch of bull jive, as he would say. It's just ironic to me, and my hot take would just be, it's crazy to me how many of a lot of the powerful black men in mainstream media, everyone shot on Shakari for what for whatever reason it was when she was one of the more popular names in track. They could have easily used the oh market around her, things like that, put a put a shield around her when she was getting attacked for things like wearing weaves, colored weaves, wearing nails. Everything like that, all the things she's done. Nah, we belittled her. But when it comes to Caitlin Clark, little old white, great white hope, not only the Shannon Sharp, but Stephen A. Smith, the cast of Gills Arena, Nick Young, everybody just get the bow jangling around for Caitlin Clark. It's funny to me. That's my hot take. That, that literally goes to exactly what I'm saying. Y'all ready to be first, reactionary, uh, not putting thought to this, but that's what. Journalism, and I've seen the tweet, journalism is lacking real journalists in today's climate. Um, you got Stephen A. Smith. I mean, not Stephen A. Smith, but Skip Bayless. I mean, damn, my bad. They all are the same. Shannon Sharp contradicting herself on some of these things, not even noticing them, uh, just driving it up for the likes. And y'all know he brought Monica on his show? He be bringing all these people on his show now because he knows it's going to get clicks. Stephen A.? Hmm. Shannon, no Shannon. Yeah, I see. No, he had a yeah. Shan- yeah, on. Shannon had Monica on the show. She had a clap back to it or whatever, saying nobody made me and shit like that. So. What are we doing here? Are we really getting to the actual meat and potatoes? And Shannon, Shannon, don't be listening to to really respond. He just he be listening to like talk. When are you finished? All right, let me talk. I'm not defending them when I say this because I didn't even like fully hear Shannon Sharp's personal take on this subject. What I will say, and we covered it on the pod, but I didn't watch the full segment that time. What I will say is I never do TV after all this shit because it's too easy to, like, get get the get the get the raccoon label. You know, it's too easy to get that. And I'm like, Ugh. that is kind of t- it's kind of tough. But do I think that with Caitlin Clark, there's definitely some weird standards going on? Yeah, for sure, because I I think that because she's popular, she should have made it thing was weak. I said it, I said it on the pod. I understand where they're coming from, but I thought it was weak then. I think it's weak now. Yeah. I just take your time. If you really want to be about it for 
real. No, I just mean the takes. Like, take your time yeah. when you make a take. Simple as that. Be so. Now, this might sound crazy after what Damo just said for his hot take, but I'm just out of the Caitlin Clark discourse, man. I'm, I'm just coming oh. out and say it. Just, just all, all of it, bro. I'm like, I, I saw, I saw it today. The, the interview, and like the, the missing interview. I'm just, I'm, I'm a watch her play. I'm gonna like her Instagram post. I'm gonna keep on watching the WNBA. But I'm, um, I'm like damn near at a point where I'm, I'm gonna block the fucking word Caitlin Clark on, on Twitter. Like, <laughs> like damn. it's just tiring, bro. It feels like every three days there's just a quote and she didn't say this or she did say this is being dissected um and, and magnified bro it's just i don't know bro it's just it's just lame at this point i feel bad i'm gonna keep it a basketball i understand like you know if, if people want to have larger conversations hey y'all y'all can have that that's cool but for me nah man because it's just the same conversations being re- repeated at this point i can't lie it's not even new conversations it's just but wait but wait but but um, it's cool. I'm I'm off of it. Uh, I ain't gonna lie. I, I I sympathize with you there, gang. Um, on my anime conversations and shit, I had to mute the words One Piece, mute the words JJK. You niggas, you niggas are annoying. So I I 100 like we're not talking about the show, or in this case, we're not talking about the player. We're talking about anything else. It's fucking annoying. Uh, with Caitlin Clark, I can't block CC though. That's like. I can't do it, but you're not wrong. It's very annoying that, like, we're not talking about, and granted, we're live right now. We're covering different stuff, but I guarantee you tonight, nobody's going to talk about the Fever actually winning a very good game, but instead, we're going to have some discussion about is Caitlin Clark the best player on our team or some shit. I don't know. You know how this sick shit goes. I, I'll say it's definitely annoying. And, and I'm, I'm going to just say this. So this is not a case of, like, I feel bad for CC. It's just... Whatever the conversation is, is just tiring to me. I don't. It's not even like a ah, uh, she's being victimized. It's just oh, okay, bro. You, you said this three days ago already, and this is just another example to what the fuck you were talking about. I'm not gonna lie. I don't got too much to say about your take because I dropped the Caitlyn Clark video today. So hey, yeah, you had it. it's cool. Nigga said, "Fuck that. I got bills." <laughs> just, don't claim, home, just don't claim to be a journalist, which. To go back to what Omar's original take was, I just remembered, I think it was one random episode where Stephen A kind of like G-checked somebody for not having journalist credentials or something like that. His credentials are dying nowadays, gang. I ain't gonna lie. But the way he acts, I I, I remember, I remember, I'm saying this like when I'm 90, but mm-hmm. you when you did works, and just in like professional research settings, et cetera, et cetera, you... you, you do your rough draft. Well, you do your outline, your rough draft. You know, it takes you some time to gather your evidence. You're citing your sources. You write it all down up into a draft, and then you send it over to somebody to get a peer review. Then you take back their notes. And then you write another draft. Do, you know, you repeat that process until you feel like it's fine to post. We could talk about today's media cycle and how quick and everyone is, but I swear, especially the ones that take their time to do it are going to last much longer than you. I gotta get it off quick, guys. Like we can we can make that into like our, our domain, nigga. That shit applies to YouTube too. That shit applies damn near to anything. Someone in chat may sound it as, but I actually agree that like the concept and what you're saying, the theory sound good, but the buzz is the buzz. Niggas gonna wanna see something, they're gonna wanna see it when they when they get the hype of it. Dropping a not like us reaction, don't hit the same. If it's five, if it's a week later, ver- no matter who you are, versus if it was right then and there, I disagree. I I disagree with that. I I'm, I'm, could. I'm telling you right now, the Bs and what's it, Zs and Blue, Zs and Blue. Mm-hmm. Now that, that fair. You know what, what what I'm saying is they could get it off fast. Anthony Fantano can get it off fast, but I can um, I not almost guarantee. I can guarantee you, if it took Joe Budden two weeks to respond to that song, people would be fiending. For that Joe Budden reaction, it's about with, with the built up discography. Industry. Fair, yeah. With it's the, about who you are in these industries. The same thing with, uh, I don't know, uh, Corey Kinchin or something like that. People can be playing a game. Oh, Jimmy High Roller, Jimmy High nice Roller, or whatever the case. Like when, when it could be topic or whatever, he could be three weeks late. But if that's how long it took for him to really make a good video about it, 
And when he drops, that shit's still going to bang. So I guess the final question before we move on is, do you think everyone should be aspiring to be that person? Because some people ain't got it. I'm just yeah, it I agree. Is. Every every Everybody doesn't have it. Uh, we just need to know who they are, identify what they are. And honestly, if it's not for you, just start blocking them people out. <laughs> just truly start to get away from those people. Uh, especially if you're not going to do these. And, and mind you, I also don't feel like it's crazy when it's a smaller topic. It's a small topic. I don't give a fuck. The, right. the, the new Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich made with uh, uh, duck breast meat has come out. I don't care about who gives the reaction out or whatever. I'm going to do the quick reaction and I'm going to wait for Gordon Ramsay's reaction. But when it's something serious about race, gender, all that other stuff like that, Take I, know, what you're saying. I'm, I know who I'm saving that for, gang. I think that's something you work up to, though. For like, sure. I think even even the names that we're talking about, like, because I, I have that same argument with like Kai. Like, Kai, he can he can he doesn't have to stream every day now. Like, he can stream once every two weeks. But that two weeks, motherfuckers will show up. But that that wasn't how he blew up. He blew up off of you know streaming twelve hours a day. Um, same thing with other uh, NBA media accounts. They blew up uploading every single day, and then they just get to a point where they amass a certain following where. Hey man, you know this this guy's a part of my regular schedule. Where is he at? And then you kind of play it that way and uh largen the gap between uploads. I think a guy that's done that really well is actually Rusty Buckets. Cuz I don't know if y'all remember how he blew up, but he was Mr. I'm going to upload TV. an NBA video mm-hmm. every day. And now he uploads like really big projects on his uh, on his YouTube channel and like from from the last time I checked like they're doing really good. People respect the fuck out of them. Everyone gets excited for them. Um, and they perform well every time. So I'm not gonna be too combative because two for one would be the opposite of what you're saying. Cause two for one started. Yeah, um, he, started he actually one. took his fucking time with that yeah. shit. And then he went there. But I agree with what you're saying. I just think if you again do the unserious shit in that time frame, but when you want to start tackling serious topics. That's when you need to wait till you have amassed an audience to where, all right, we're going to wait for his respected voice. Um, like I said, they they did the whole Apple event yesterday. MKBHD could have not talked about it for three weeks. If he would have talked about it in that third week, it wouldn't have mattered. So, it's kind of, um, it's just weird with NBA reporting because, like, Shams and Woj's thing is being, like, first to the shit, though. So, I don't know. Yeah, and I don't want to be the... Some stuff doesn't, some stuff does not matter. Jerry West dying is more than eight Yeah, sentences. that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Take your that's time more on. than eight sentences. Like, even we should be dedicating more time to it, but not, nonetheless. Um, Sage. RP Jerry West. Oh, my hot take is a little weird, but it's definitely true. I've had a worse NBA season than 90% of you. <laughs> let me let me cook. I had to deal with the Los Angeles Lakers and Darvin Ham. Let's just start there. Well, I had expectations for this team. I don't want to hear a Wizards fan rant. I don't want to hear a Spurs fan rant. I don't want to hear a, hey, Raptors here. No, all of the bottom feeders that never were relevant pack up. So like, let's, let's get you all out of there because you didn't have expectations. Start there. I had to deal with LeBron James, Anthony Davis on the same team, deal with Bron Sexuals being on this team, having hell of talent on the roster, and the entire world tell me the team is not talented and I have no proof to show it is because we get swept in the first round by the one team that is a literal counter to our team. (sighs) Then I get a glimmer of joy with Anthony Edwards defeating the Denver Nuggets. (laughs) And he then fucking stinks it up and loses! Then he loses, but then I get that one speck of joy because it's Luka Doncic, and now niggas is getting swept, and not only are they getting swept, now the world think Luka shit. So, my God. And and then on top of that, the east side of things, you know, just predictions-wise, the Bucks fucking flop, so now I look dumb. Donovan Mitchell's stressed out, and they can't win anything over there, so... Yippee! Where's Demon's gonna go? Probably to an op that's gonna smack the Lakers later on. Ah, I just your Mikael the, Bridges propaganda. The, 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 the Celtics are going to win a title. Mikael Bridges is not a first option. I have nothing. 
You're muted. You're muted, gang. You're muted. What a Dang. what a horrible NBA season. <laughs> well, <laughs> damn. It is what it is at that point. Um, let's move on to this last. Yeah, no, you're still cooked. No, we really can't hear you. Speak. All okay. right, you're good. Well, now we hear you. Now I can speak. I can't even fucking finish a sentence. Joel and Beads hurt, so I can't even do my my. Hey, man, let's see what he does in the first round. But I can't even hate on niggas. The I flipper slipped. Nothing. The flipper slipped. That's inevitable. I have nothing. I have absolutely nothing this season. I need to hear how someone had a worse season than me. This shit was arguably the worst season I have ever seen in my life. I hate basketball. I love it. Fuck you. Um, <laughs> I want to go into the last segment of the show. Uh, we are going to blindly rank... <laughs> We are going to blindly rank the worst takes on Gills Arena by the crew. Okay. Damn. All right. Yeah. yeah it's tough. I know. Um, is this starting... the last one dicks up? Hey, it is. <laughs> it might be. <laughs> this, is, this is low key. Yeah, it is actually kind of crazy. Starting off with our first new favorite. Um, I'm the one and only Rashad McCants. This came out this week. This is hot off the presses. <laughs> one through one through five. So you respect Reggie Miller's legacy over LeBron's? Oh my God! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But Reggie didn't have near the pieces LeBron had during his journey, and I think that if Reggie would have had those pieces, mm -hmm. his legacy would have during his journey. <laughs> so you respect Reggie Miller. Two. One through five, one through five, one through five. I don't know what else possibly could be said. I'm so tempted to burn one. I'm gonna go say two. I'm gonna play yeah, pussy. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna say two, but that that probably is number one, and we're being pussy. <laughs> Damo, because I've heard a lot of their takes, I am comfortable putting this one too, because I know there's not that many better than this one in terms of idiocracy. Um, oh my god, I froze. It was so bad, yeah. So, <laughs> ice cold uh, take. <laughs> I'm gonna put it at two because I know that there's gonna be one that's just gonna piss me off so much more as well. I, I hate to ride the coattails here. Um, I guess there, so we're just gonna continue to blind rank these. I don't even know how LeBron James and Reggie Miller legacy same sentence just doesn't make any sense, but here how, we go. How did that happen? I don't know. But, but but to be real, how many teams have won without generational talent? Steph is not a generational talent. Detroit, right? Steph Curry Steph is not a generational. Steph not a generational. You know what a generational? Wimby is a generational person. That is a generational Steph talent. Became, Steph became a great. Ba generational means you can't mimic it. You can't mimic. Damn, this is bad. You can't hey, mimic at number one. Can you, you can't. Pick? Can you mimic? Magic Johnson, 6'9", point guard with the vision. No. You can't mimic Shaquille O'Neal's body. Kareem and what it, you can't, you mimic can't mimic fucking um, uh, LeBron James. Those You can't mimic Wimby. Those are generational. I agree. It, I'm sorry I hopped out of frame. That just blew me. Um, that should be one, though. That, honestly, that, that probably should be one. Oh, I guess I'm gonna disagree. I got that shit four. At, so hey, hey, Bezos, I'm right here with you. I'm gonna say is, I'm gonna say that's four because if anything, I can at least understand what he's coming from. And my one major thing is just generational talent as the lingo. I see what he's trying to say, but yeah. it's still awesome. I got it at three. Um again, very familiar with these guys' takes. Me too. Yeah, I got it at I three. It three. I have it at three as well. I got four. Um all right, I am going to play this next one. These these takes are getting worse. Trust me. Fifth, right? So if you wait, is in there? Okay, T Mac is to the two guard. Does T Mac go in the top five? No. But you so you saying James is the two? Yeah. So I I don't I don't. D Wade pushes out if T Mac is the two. So you have you pushing out D Wade? 
D Wade's resume over T Mac's resume? As a two guard, yeah. As a two guard? Yeah, if T Mac is a two guard, yeah, T Mac is top. Are five. we doing put T Mac? Are we doing the resume or just the potential? The resume. Or the potential. I'm on the players. I don't never talk resume when we talk. So we talking about, about the what? I'll never because resumes is is. I mean, long, I mean, long. I mean, are we done, you know, I'm talking about longevity. Subjective. Longevity. The way career was better. That's all subjective. The way career was better. Longevity. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Longevity. He's you talk a better player though. To me, I mean, then then top five. Team for what sure. is this thing? <laughs> <laughs> for sure. well, I mean, so, I mean, if we're talking about just the player himself at their height, I mean, Trace McGrady can argue that he's top ten of all time. Mm. That's a conversation mm. to be yeah. had. That's why I don't. But you can't have those in there because but the, 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 wants to. Yeah, include, I love greatness. Oh, you played this amount. Nah, but that's that's hurt. the key. You can't be great for four, two, three to four years. You can. Greatness but is you, longevity. You got to sustain your greatness for a long period of time. You can't be technically. So what's taking my ranking? Because I heard like three. You <laughs> know, I think I, if we're talking about Rashad McCants' take, yeah, I would yeah. be blunt. It was gonna start at five. I was like, okay, that's this is bad, but it, this is probably something worse. That shit, nigga. I'm tempted to say one. That shit got just bad, bad. That that take got awful. D Wade it has a better career than T Mac is the thing. Or no, I'm sorry. T Mac had a better career than D Wade. T Mac. But then his uh, argument was essentially resumes are subjective to like, like exactly what you've accomplished. What you would write down is, hey, I've done this. It's subject. So I'm like, nigga, what? How do say say? I ask you, yo, who's who's your top five NBA players? I mean, it's subjective. So <laughs> what? <is that? laughs> I'm going three. I think that's say I think there's probably something out there better, and there's something out there that's probably just and I ain't tripping off of. But and I think I, that take started at five. It went to three. I got it at four. I got it at three. That's not worse than um Reggie Miller over Bronze. <laughs> that's my one. I'm sorry. Now uh I probably should move two to one. And then the the one that I just decided was one at two. But that's 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 a terrible fucking take. That's so yeah. trash. That's I got so one in five now. So. Yeah, I got one in five. Um, this one should hit home. For some of us. the same. Like. Yeah, should hit home for some of us here. <laughs> right, 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 yeah. right. I would imagine Minnesota. I don't know for sure. I'm not in that man's business like okay. that. Okay. I mean, this game for that baby. I see you. Look it's the baby, bro. It's gonna be there when you get back. Yeah, we hope. Yeah. <laughs> Right. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm just yeah, saying. Yeah. I didn't know. I'm just saying the baby going to be okay, trusted. but unnecessary. The baby going to, it don't know. Whatever you about to think you about to do with the baby, he going to be asleep. Need that right. skin to skin sleep. contact. Okay, yeah, he is skin to skin in two days. <laughs> right on the titty. The whole time, right on the titty. What you saying? We need some milk. Like, I get, I get you want to be with your wife and smile and stuff and your good uh, NBA uh, health care insurance. Right. It's because of you playing. Right. Trust me. They got everything. So first child. <laughs> first child born. Rudy Gobert is not missing the child's birth, but decides to miss the game. Gil says, it's just a baby, bro. That's one. <laughs> <laughs> Promoting dead beatery on day zero. No, nah, I'm good, bro. I'm good, man. That's yeah, one. A parent would say five. I mean, a parent would say one. I'm not a parent. Um, I'm a I'm a go five only because again, I see where he what he's trying to say. Just a horrible message, but I see what he's trying to so, trying to get at. So I'm going one. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've seen I, I've seen what they've been trying to say with all these takes. That don't matter. Uh, we're talking about somebody who was a known deadbeat dad promoting deadbeatery. <laughs> that ain't even about basketball. I'm not going to hold you. I'm going to go one. There's no way any good. basketball take can be worse than fuck them kids. I don't think it's possible. I, I saw a lot of fives in chat, though. I'm going to need y'all to explain. There's like a row of fives in chat right now. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not saying it's the worst. Like, I'm not saying it's not the worst like take or whatever, but I, I put my four or five as... Can I at least remotely see what you're trying to say or even where you're coming from? I think I can, but nigga, dead beer. Um, 
there there's some honorable 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 mentions players don't fear lebron the same that they did mj kobe or ai uh but that doesn't take away from your greatness that was said about him uh this was the asura thompson you're 20 turning 21 averaging 10 points you're not in my future I don't want that. um uh players the nba isn't is isn't, isn't scouting paolo I, I don't even remember what that take was I was going to play this one from Cruz where he says uh, Gil, uh, Nikola Jokic is the worst MVP in the last 40 years. Oh, I don't know if y'all remember that one. Yeah. I don't know that one. He said he was it's the calm. worst. Yeah, worst. Um, oh, man. Forgot another one. Gilbert Arena says Stephen Curry never received the same amount of attention from opposing defenses that Allen Iverson did. Oh, uh, that would have been mine. Yeah, that that would have been mine. That's just that is not true, gang. Yeah, that would right. have been mine. No, no, no. He says that Clay Thompson would have averaged 30 points per game playing next to Allen Iverson. That, that also is that in that one. Uh, but for the last one, I did just find this one. Um, this is in regards to the real Hoopers. And uh, Kevin Durant. Uh, oh, let's see, let's see. This this is my one. Fuck. The real hoopers know that Kevin Durant is going to go down as a better, I think, better basketball player than, than LeBron. Than LeBron. Ooh. At the end of at the end of the road, not right God now. Damn it! But promotion, if you look at Steph, LeBron, and KD, the promotion between Steph and LeBron. Is here. Mm -hmm. AD's here. Is I don't know if he's presentable or marketable. I don't know what it is, but they the have dad, more. They the have more. They have more commercials. Mm -hmm. The dad thing that their parent, like their fathers, kind of also with the LeBron conversation because he has no like bitches? a Damn. college age <laughs> son and older kids, and Zuri's like ten or eleven now. It like makes them like seem like a little bit older than he actually is. You look at KD. But, and KD's not that young from no, them. He's not, but when he's, he's not being wrong, pushed, right? He's not exactly. being pushed over the limit. And you would think because he's a Nike guy, he's a champion. He came in with just as much hype as LeBron. Mm -hmm. You know, Texas, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. DC assault, all that stuff. It's like, well, why is KD not being seen as top three all time? Because, because the media killed off the legacy when he left. When he, when he left, yep. When he That's. Left. <laughs> Yeah, I won. 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 If that ain't number one, yeah, I won. That's zero. That's zero. Page is zero for her. That's zero. Yeah, no, no, no. Oh, I'm not explaining that. Oh. Damo, I know you're a parent, but. I mean. It gotta be my five based off how I rank it. <laughs> oh man, that's a that that's so a cool. crazy piece of work. That's a crazy piece of work, man. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Uh, I thought I sold, but no, that is by far number one. Let me play the let me play the Steph one just just in case, because also this the Steph one is kind of funny too. I ain't gonna lie. The, the problem good. is. Woo! The problem is that Steph Curry brand is I, up I, over there. I, I like now, it. I love AI, but he's no, not you Steph. Not because no, you, you never, you never, because you never played against him. You you don't know what it was. The mm. blur, right? You don't know what it. Oh, you me and I'm gonna talk about this. <laughs> like he himself demanded. All five people. So we. So I. This guy, no, he doesn't. So this is guy. No, he's Why never been step past half court. He demands every. No, he's never been quadruple teamed. When he kept, when he when he stepped past half court, everybody's guarding him. Who? Uh, uh, Steph Curry. What are you talking about? You're not just gonna let Steph Curry walk past half with the ball. You're gonna have to guard him. They do you, it all the time. You switched. You switched out. Switch? Okay, another right. guy. Another, it's five guys. Switch. It's five no guys one, watching one guy. No one switched on an Allen Iverson. You didn't have to. No, we you didn't have. No. It. You got to switch those stuff. We didn't. No, no, what no. What do you mean you didn't? We didn't it. switch. No one was that fucking stupid, Brandon. Because the, the thing about Steph about? is, what are y'all talking about? Steph wasn't fast like no, Allen how, Iverson. Does it matter? So you can switch onto him, and he's gonna try to bop you, Allen Iverson. You Gone. have to double or triple team. Gone. If he was there, we we don't give a fuck who you were. Mm -hmm. You're over there. 
cool. We're here. We watch right. that. If yeah. Clay was on, if Clay was with Allen Iverson, mm -hmm. Clay would average 30. Easy. Because we did not give two shits about Clay at that point. Because I just love NBA players, man, because they have their own, like, you aren't qualified to speak shit going on in, in the NBA itself. So a guy like um, Jason Tatum won't be able to talk to Kevin Durant until he gets two rings. And then, well, did you even get to play? Did you even play Jason Tatum or Kevin Durant? No. So you don't know what you're talking about. Even though people would say that Brandon Jennings from, was from a more comp air. You niggas are now, mind that, you, Rashad McCants has never played against Steph Curry, and Gil and Steph Curry only had like one healthy season where they overlapped, and it was like one of Curry's like first years in the league. Oh so. my fucking god! So that's bad. <sighs> that, that'd have been like that'd have been like two, three. That'd have been like two, three. I still think yeah. Numero UNO is undefeated. I I have um. Nothing to say. Uh, before we go, I, I did not want to uh, gloss over Jerry West the way that we did because I did yeah. say that it was important. Um, I want to double down on what I'm saying. On the if, if you talk about basketball, you can't mention basketball without mentioning Jerry West. Um, top ten people of all time. You can't mention the Lakers. He was at the beginning of the Los Angeles Lakers. Uh, the year that they relocated from Minneapolis, Jerry West was drafted first player um, to be drafted by that team that was relocating. There are pictures of him in the parking lots of malls with the half court dribbling in order to promote the Los Angeles Lakers. Um, and, you know, very, very great player, of course. I think he gets a bad rap because of the era. Um, but Rep the Lakers extremely hard, was very fundamental uh, in getting Magic Johnson comfortable in L.A. Um, same thing with Kobe Bryant. Same thing with Shaquille O'Neal. Um, you know, great presence to represent the NBA, literally and figuratively uh, by being the figure that is the symbol that represents the NBA. Um Great person for the Players Association um, to advance the NBA to where it is today. Uh, I don't. I, I think that we talk about this quite often. I say this quite often. Basketball is still fairly young, and it is it is not good to see the pioneers of the game pass away like this. But I know we clown about we done with the '90s, we done with the '80s, we done with the '70s, whatever the case may be. We can be done with it, but basketball can't be talked about without talking about one of the best shooting guards, one of the best players of all time, and one of the most foundational pieces of basketball without talking about Jerry West. And and he was impactful um, across generations, too, because I believe like he was a part of the 2000s Lakers three-peat. He mm -hmm. had a hand in the Warriors. Mm -hmm. um, so that Flip. And also just on some basketball stuff, too. If there's one player from the 60s that if you watch tape, like, holds up and it's still pretty entertaining, it is Jerry West. Like, he, he, got, he got some cool highlights. But He was the transition from the Bob Cousy era of guard to the – whoa. What's going on here? This is – Pull up. Pull up. Jumpers? Whoa. Baca? Nani? Pull up. Cross Crossover. Wait, why is he pulling up from – it's still two. <laughs> what is the purpose of this mid-range shuttle? <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, it's two from back there. No matter. Wait, Jerry, what? What? <laughs> what was the plan, Jerry? <laughs> and what's crazy? Is, did y'all know he played forward in college, um, and then transitioned to guard in the NBA? Um, I don't know, Hooper man. So, no, I, I rest in peace. Look, I understand that I am. Like, not even the king of We Done With The 90s because I was fighting against you guys for it and then adopted the idea later. But um, I know we'll often on the podcast just disrespect the older era on some joking troll shit or dead ass shit at times. But either way, Jerry West has a special place in my heart, if anything. Just one of the best minds in basketball history by a mile. Like, not, not even remotely close. I'm looking at his record 
as uh, at just his, I think this is his executive record. This dude was winning 50s and 60s more than he was sub 500. What the absolute f- I mean, my God, Jerry West is easily one of the greatest basketball minds of all time. Someone said that he's top 10. He's honestly probably so flirting with the five, three, one, whatever. It honestly don't even matter in terms of impact on the game of basketball. RP, man, I ain't got nothing. I ain't got nothing to say, man. That's just crazy. Um, NBA recognized that man as the logo. That that's that's the last thing. Stop stop being weak. Recognize him as the logo. They have uh, they've denied it because they'll they'll have to pay them is what's being said. So they've denied it for years. Oh, that's actually lame. What the fuck? I didn't know that. Yeah, it is time though. Uh with that being said. Oh shit. Oh, dang. <laughs> this has been another episode of the Let's Keep It a Buck podcast. I think we did a good job today, fellas. Um, that being said, Damo, say goodbye to the people, people, people. All right, Chaz being my friend, Midnight Snack, and we will be back some point in the next couple of days. Um, keep the money on, man. I'm a stream, Sage a stream, Souls a stream. Omar dropping up the video gets 100k in 24 hours. Don't think nobody knows, gang. Crazy. Um, yeah, man, we we come at you live in your face. Let's keep it a buck coming all over the place. Yeah. It's coming all over the place. You don't have to say your word. Say, say goodbye to the people. All right, people. Um, I, I, I'm. What the fuck did Damo just say? Uh, all right, all right, people. Um, look, man, keep it a buckers. The TSO haters. Your day has happened, man. Um, I finally got canceled, so maybe I won't hold the pod <laughs> back to you all. <laughs> um, but if you guys want to see a canceled streamer. Or a canceled YouTuber, follow TSO underscore Sage on Twitch and YouTube. Tonight, we're going to play some Dragon Ball Kakarot because you guys told me the Zarbon fight should piss me off. Then after that, man, we're going to watch one of the worst Dragon Ball movies of all time in Metal Cooler because it's just that fucking bad. Might even make it a drinking game, but we'll see you there unless I'm, you know, deplatformed. Uh, be so. Say goodbye. Be so. I appreciate y'all for coming through. Don't let us get one, man. Don't let us get one. We're going to be on Playback Live tomorrow, man, uh, for game four and on Twitch. Don't let us get one, man. The Mavs in seven. I bet. Um, with that being said, <laughs> uh, trust the process. Oh, God. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> trust the process. You started to crack um, me. <laughs> trust the process. Trust the process. Trust the process. That's all I got to say. Uh, if you don't have 100K in a day, I don't know what to tell you, twin. With that being said, bye, guys! The process of playing defense!